Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now, it's time for Off the Press to look at what the national dailies are saying this morning. And joining me to discuss the papers is Jide Johnson, is a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, and is joining us from here in Lagos State. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Happy New Month. Happy New Month to you. Forward. Yeah. Glad to have you. All right, today we'll be starting with the business NG. And, um, well, the first headline I want to take is up here. It's a small headline at the top. It says, economic hardship, PDP, LP, NNPP, others failing. And that was being said by Pat Utomi. What do you think about this? Do you think um, PDP, NNPP, LP should be blamed at this time? Because if they're saying they're failing... I mean, APC is currently the ruling party at the moment. So why is Patu Tommy coming out to say that the PDP, the Labour Party, and the NNPP, others are failing? Well, I think what he's saying is that you need to provide constructive opposition, mm. providing alternatives to what the present administration is doing. And if it's about that, and I, I think that um, the presidential candidate of PDP and that of the Liberal Party, they've, they've offered alternatives to what the present administration is doing, um, giving their own view as, as regards what they intend to do if they are the one in power. So as far as I'm concerned, the opposition has provided an alternative policy viewpoint. So I don't know the standpoint from which um, Professor Padu Tumi is making his judgment or is coming from and I don't know how he came to that conclusion. Um, other than, uh, I don't know what your stick he used to to, to 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 come to that assertion that the, the opposition party are failing. What else do you expect from the opposition party to do, particularly just, this is even a presidential system of government, not the parliamentary system of government, which invariably they have an opportunity in the parliament to hear their views, to share their their opinions and their policy options as a poly, as a, as a, as the alternate government in presidential system of government you can only ventilate from the outside not even within the floor of of, 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 of the of the national of the of the parliament or having your own alternate 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 government um your own alternate cabinet so i don't know the standpoint from which professor party told me um, it's coming from probably from a different planet from which we are in. And that's why it's blaming the opposition party for what is happening. If you want to blame anybody, I think the entire blame should go to the APC. APC has been in power for nine years. So what has Labour got to do with that? And what has PDP got to do with that? I don't know. Mm. So speaking about parliamentary system of government, there's been a debate um, that Nigeria should move to a parliamentary system of government. Currently, we run a presidential system of government. But people are saying that a parliamentary system of government might just be better because, like you've pointed out, um, other parties who have been elected can go there and air out their views. So do you think maybe that, that would just be a good way for Nigeria? Well, do whatever system of government you practice, it's just about the, the actors and the players in the system and their willingness to comply with the basic rules and tenets that govern that system of government, whether parliamentary or presidential, it's people that will practice it and it's guided by rules, norms, values, and the constitution, which is the grand norms of, of, of the practice. So if you are looking at parliamentary system of government, then you talk about the entire restructuring of the country. That means that we will not have governors at the state. That means that we might even be going back to regional government rather than have 36 state governors. Probably we might be having um, we might be having six six premiers and then probably mayor for Lagos and Abuja. Um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, whichever system we think is the Nigerians in totality. If you have a say in it, we could probably have a referendum to ask Nigerians whether we want a parliamentary system of government or presidential system. The presidential system of government, it is not the system, it is the way you operate the system that really matters. However, parliamentary system of government will give um, the opposition an opportunity to have an alternate government and you compare the complexity and the, 
diversity of the Nigerian nation. I think that we were well suited to a parliamentary system of government because in presidential system of government, it's a zero sum, it's a winner takes all. But in parliamentary system of government, you, you tend to have the opposition having having their own presence and having their own state. In, in government, for example, we had operated the parliamentary system of government in the last election. You discover that all parties, at least we have a presence in the national as we speak all parties have presence in the national assembly which is the legislature and then in the in the executive they also have some semblance of presence because the parliament which is the bedrock of parliamentary system of government where the minister is first and foremost the lawmaker before he becomes the prime minister first among the equal among those he is selected to be in his cabinet mm. then the opposition to we have that opportunity to have their own their own alternate cabinet so um, it's 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 something we can look at because we have tried this presidential system of government for close to quarter of a decade now, and it seems that everything seems to be completely centralized. Power is almost concentrated in one individual, and that individual is becoming bigger and bigger than every other institution in 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 in, in the country, and that's the president. That's the presidency. So the presidency is becoming much more. And more overwhelming with 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 tremendous power. Sovereignty tends to reside now with the presidency and not with the people. And power is concentrated in the presidency and not among the three organs of government: the judiciary, the executive, the judiciary, the executive, and the legislature. Yes, Invariably, we have seen that in modern times, the exec the, the legislature has become an appendage, an extension of the executive, and also the the judiciary has also become an appendage and extension of the judiciary a situation whereby you see the head of the judiciary bound before the chairman of the national party and kotoing attending events called by governors called by the executive is an indication that well one of the organs is supreme than every other organ so and the parliamentary system of government um, will be will, will, will be an option but nigerians have to decide whether this is what they want or what they don't want i don't want the situation whereby some group of intellectuals or some group of elites to sit down and say, okay, this is what we want for Nigeria. Because what we are practicing today were just 12 wise men sitting down in one place, reviewing what was done in the confab of 1995 and came in, coming up with the 1999 constitution, in which even Obasanjo that was sworn in as the first president of that constitution did not even see the constitution the day he was sworn in. It was much more later that mm -hmm. he saw the constitution with which he came to power. So it's, it's a conversation we must have. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so one thing that you said is the, is the actors and the players in this. So regardless of whatever system of government, it's the same yeah. makeup um, of the people that are being elected. So regardless, if we want to have a better system of government, even in the presidential system, we can. It's just the makeup of the actors and the players. Anyway, so staying yeah. on the fact that, you know, the opposition parties are supposed to have an alternative, an alternative solution for Nigerians, especially with what's going on um, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, had said that the CBN's 22.75% interest rate will worsen the economic situation. What do you think about that? Well, I don't know what you want, how you want to build the economy with double-digit interest rate. I don't know how you intend to, to build the economy with double-digit interest rate. Um, I don't know how you want to provide credit. Credit to, to build the base, the backbone of your economy is the productive sector, is the industrial sector, the capacity <clears throat> to grow your gross domestic product and then in such a way that you can favorably compete by exporting whatever you have produced in excess in your country to other countries in order to earn foreign exchange and in, by focusing on your comparative advantage in, in international trade. So I don't understand and I don't know why the central bank governor, the central bank uh, will come up with um, with this double digit 22 point, what percent, almost 25 percent interest rate. So if I want to go and get credit in order to start a business or to inject into my business, if I, if I get the credit of 2 billion, that means I'll be paying the interest rate of 225 million. We are, who are those that are going to bear the brunt of the interest rate which I'm going to pay? It is... It is, the, it is the ordinary people, invariably you are also contributing to the inflation. Because what do I do when I invest that, <coughs> excuse me please, when, in, when I inject that into my businesses, 
I want to make back that money and I'll be able to pay back the loan of 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 of, of the bank so that then um, the state does not come after me just like the state of New York went after Donald Trump. <laughs> Well, so one thing that is a little bit worrisome for me is for people who do businesses, um, they told you that your markup, your profit margin should be about 30% thereabout. So if my markup is going to be about 30% and I need to pay back a loan of 22.75%, then how much am I really making? Why am I in business? What am I going to make any profit at all? So those are like questions that I have, burning questions that I have because I'm like, why am I even going to do this business or why would I even want to take a loan? And I expect that you're here as a government to help me. Um, but anyways, moving on from that, this still has to do with some economic situation. Nigeria imposes annual levy on companies employing foreigners employing foreigners. So what do you think about this one, the fact that Nigeria um, is imposing annual levies on these companies? Well, um, I think what this administration is good at is about imposing levy, imposing taxation, mm. and removing our subsidy, and looking for a way. Uh, it's very clear that if you look at the antecedent of the president, if you look at where it's coming from, and if you look at the template which the legal state has operated, where he is the godfather and the benefactor of those that have succeeded him since 1999. You understand that it's a template about, about taxation, it's a template about levies, and it's a template about increasing the revenue base of the country and um, without, without having a recourse to study the But is that, a, is that a right way to increase revenue? No, 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 no. It's, it's, without looking at the consequent effect it has on the overall economy, I can tell you for a fact because I have an understanding of this, a particular implication. What was the implication of the various taxation, double taxation levies imposed by Lagos State government on the business sector and industrial sector in Lagos State? Just take a trip. Take a trip to Kedja Industrial Estate. Take a trip to Industrial Liberty Industrial Estate and look at those estates and look at where those companies are. And then you take a trip to Lagos, Lagos Ibado Express. You look at your left between 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 Lagos and Shagam and see the kind of company springing up, or you go to Agbara Industrial Estate, or yeah. you go where company left Lagos to go to, and some of them left to go to to go to Ghana. So yeah. the implication of this is that there's, if there's if there's over taxation, people will look out for better places where they could do businesses. And now um, it's it's a competition between the states. And I just want to use an example in the United States of America. There's that double taxation in in, in, in California, in New York, and you see a lot of businesses moving to Florida, moving to Tennessee, moving from Delaware to, to, to states whereby they enjoy tax relief albums. And that's, 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 that's the beauty. What government does is you create a, an enabling environment. You provide tax relief for people that are running businesses. One, they provide employment opportunity for your citizenry. Government cannot employ the cannot how many people can government employ in government established ministries and department of agencies? It is these private individuals that have invested their money in the economy that actually employ the largest chunk of the people. So what they do they are providing service for you for the for the for, for your citizen and at the same time helping government to create employment opportunities, relief relieving the burden on government with respect to meeting up with the demands of the citizens with, with, with regards to government provided, providing them with employment opportunities. So if you want to tax them to death, you don't muscle the ox. Um, I see taxation as muscle the ox. When other, in other climate, they are trying to reduce the taxes imposed in, 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 in post, in post on businesses operating in their country, and they are trying to get, they are trying to get, um, they are trying to get them um, best best and to undo to handle their business so that the business can grow tremendously and they have opportunity to grow the economy grow their businesses and employ as much as many people as possible reduce poverty and unemployment in in the country you don't you don't you don't you don't stifle such with with, with levies and the rest of it and then if you are saying that you want to encourage foreign investment you can't be saying that you're in, imposing heavy levies on, on, on expatriates or foreign uh, foreigners that are coming to your country to work. If so, if I'm coming from India and I'm coming to invest in Nigeria, I'm coming from China, I'm coming to invest in Nigeria. I think there will be some Chinese or Indians or Americans, regardless of where, 
which nationals are coming to come and work here. So on one hand, government is saying that we are, we are traveling all over the world to encourage foreign investment. Presently, the president has gone to Qatar. Now, if Qatar wants to make investment in Nigeria now, uh, just like Qatar has made serious investment in the real estate businesses in in, in, in United Kingdom, and mm. Qatar is coming to do that in Nigeria, and you now say, okay, you can't bring your nationals. If you are mm. bringing your nationals, we are going to impose this burden. I don't know this uh, this counter countervailing policies that government comes up with. I don't understand whether there is synergy among all the agencies of government when it comes to encouraging businesses to come to Nigeria. Mm. Well, <laughs> let's see how that turns out. Um, I'm going to take another headline, which is now the major headline on the business NG, and it says, hardship showing, showing car backs Nigeria's decentralization as hunger poverty persists. Now, taking it over to the punch, the major headline on the punch, because he was speaking at the, um, the 50th anniversary of the punch, and it says, past confirms deceitful. Nigeria must decentralize, says Shoinka. Um, the writers here are past confirm organizers not serious. Nigerians must negotiate their unity. And that is being said by the Nobel laureate. Um, so, what do you think about this? Um, in 2014, Former President Goodluck Jonathan um, had a national conference, you know, bringing people from all political affiliations and just talking about restructuring the country. And some recommendations were made, but over a decade, there's still no nothing to show for it. So what do you think about showing her coming out to say we need to decentralize? Because one of the things he even cited was security. What do you think about this? Well, um, just truly, really, I was at that. I was at that. Um, I was at that lecture from the beginning to the end. So I got a first-hand experience of what um, the Nobel laureate nice. um, shared with respect to his, his views. And I love the gap that he threw. He threw the gap at those that are the aims of affairs. So it was a rude awakening to some of us that were there, considering some of the issues that he has raised on on on. Uh, in the last in the last in the last nine in the last in the last one year and so I pointed out that um whether um, um what do we call a restructuring or what mm -hmm. have you it's not he says he, says he prefers even, the word restructuring and decentralization yeah, yeah, um, so it's yeah. just you know it's about narrative and he said that there's need for us to decentralize power there's need to give Opportunities to Nigeria to determine what they want, and then if concern, if 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 decentralization will lead to Nigeria disintegrating, and then it will save Nigerians from being hungry, then it is better for us to decentralize. That it's even better for Nigerians to die than for Ni for Nigeria to die than for Nigerians to die of hunger and poverty. Mm. And I seem to share his views and opinion with respect to this. Like I said earlier. There is too much power that we have concentrated at the center. On monthly basis, the governors will go to Abuja for the monthly fact meeting. It's not done anywhere in the world. You go on monthly basis, so you share the money, you share the money for the state and the local government. So you have to all concentrate in Abuja. There's too much concentration of power in Abuja. There's the need for us to decentralize, and there's the need for us to give power to the other power centers at the local government and at the state level, and there is the need for us to domesticate some of the things we are doing at the national level. It is not good for you to have a centralized police system. You can't fight security with the centralized. The bureaucracy is just human. Mm -hmm. It is. It's you, you. You have to. You have to bring it down to to community level, wherever you have some semblance of community community policing. And he said that the challenge we have had is that there have been series of meetings we have had, series of comfort we have had. But there's no sincerity on the part of those that have called for those meetings to implement. And then he said he hope that um, those at the end of affair today will look at the issue of decentralization that's giving power back to the constituent units that made up the Nigerian the Nigerian nation. And I seems to, to share it was it was a well it was a well attended lecture, well delivered, well delivered lecture, and then it was 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 a wonderful was a wonderful experience for me as a person and it was also a national discourse that to open up the conversation moving forward with respect to what the national assembly the tenth assembly will do with constitutional amendment uh, which has always been what they've been doing since and then uh, which is also an opportunity for them to make money uh, because when you set up the constitutional amendment you send up different committees they travel through the length and breadth of Nigeria, they get public hearing at the end of the day, 
uh, what effect does it have on the condition that you, you have amended? And that's why I've said, regardless of whatever system we practice, it is not the system, it is the people that practice the system that makes the system to work. <clears throat> okay, so um, Wale Shoinka, Professor Wale Shoinka, Professor Wale Shoinka, you know, a few months ago he had said that he's not going to judge President Tinubu's administration until he's a year in office. So him coming out to say this, talking about poverty and hunger in the land, talking about decentralization, is President Tinubu is still not a year in office. Do you think he should be talking about this now? Because we would have thought that, you know, he would just stay to his words <coughs> and say till one year in office. Yeah, well, once you look at the platform, the moment you accept to be the guest lecturer of one of the major flagship newspaper we have in the country, which is the Punch newspaper, and going by the punch, you should expect punches to, to be thrown mm. at that at that level. So it is not that a place where we always in to throw some punches because we had punch a uh, 50th anniversary <laughs> and uh, what I like that. So I think I think I think I think the platform uh, the platform. Uh, provided the opportunity for him to cascade everything that he probably is, is been is being viewing that he's been waiting till me to to to, to share with Nigerians mm. because the platform sometimes provides you with the opportunity to say some things which other platform might not put which better platform would you have had to say to give an overview of the entire Nigerian nation it's about the narrative concerning the Nigerian nation and then he provided a wonderful a wonderful perspective in which that to participants from all political parties, both past and present, um, past and present uh, people that have been in, in, in government, people from academia, uh, and, and people from the media, 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 media industry. So it was, it was, it was a wonderful experience. I did enjoy yes. my time, and um, it was it was a wonderful experience. So nobody should be surprised at the punch uh, that, 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 that was thrown by Pasha Oliga. Even the <laughs> The, the compare for the program two punches two punches well. at uh, the Oba of Lagos and then two punches at Obasanjo and the rest of it so it was it was a lively event it was a high opener event it was it was, it was a time for reflection reflection mm -hmm. on where we were as a nation 50 years ago when punch newspaper came into existence and um, where we are now as a nation 50 years mm -hmm. after, after and moving forward, what are the things that we need to look at and what are the things that we need to do with respect to our nation, our nationhood, the Nigerian question, which we have always run away from answering. And this is time for us to answer that question. Mm. We must, as a matter of fact, as a matter of urgency, address the Nigerian question. There is too much power in Abuja. Mm. We need to give power back to other power centers in the country. All right, so speaking of things to look at, another thing to look at is the Oronsaye report. Um, reps raised 23-man panel on Oronsaye report demand review. What do you think about this one? Um, some people have come out to say that the report might just be outdated, that it's not what we need at the moment, and um, proper review should be done before we can even say we want to adopt it. What do you think? So if they are saying that the report is outdated, what do you see about 1999 constitution? Mm. That's a good one. Uh, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see about the only books that two of the major faiths we have in the world they they, they, they use as as the base of their worship, the Bible and the Quran? Are they outdated? Are they not relevant? The essence is that when you had that report, when you had that set up that committee, as not as something changed in Nigeria, government has changed. The structure of government still remains the same. We still practice presidential system of government. In natural sense, we have even have multiplicity of agencies being created, rather than reducing the agencies which we have. The agencies of government have, have multiplied rather than reduce. So, what do you do? Would you look at the report and then um, you review the report and then? You, you implement what the report, what the report, what the report is. One of the instructive things about the report is, for example, I give you, this is even personal to my heart, Federal, Federal Radio Corporation and Voice of Nigeria, and yeah. two, two, two agencies of government under the Ministry of Information that do be merged. So why should that not, why should that, why should that not There's be There's even the EFCC why and the ICPC as yeah. well. EFCC and ICPC, what is... What is um you can have different units under the same agency, one agency head, one headquarter. Uh, so all of these things, if you look at, if you look at all of these, and then you have an understanding that, oh wow, there's a need for us to do that beyond the rhetorics of government, beyond taking away our attention and distracting us 
that government really wants to do something. Uh, because what I've just seen is that, well, they threw that into the public domain to distract us a little, to let us know that where government is intending to do something, the honest report, government is going to implement it. And then the first thing you need to look at is to look at the entourage of the president mm. that said in the week preceding his traveling to, 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 to Qatar and considering what he has said that moving forward, his entourage will not be more than 20 when he wants to go for travel. Then you look at his entourage to Qatar and then you see government will see one thing in one hand and government will be doing something differently. And that's why this government over time has lost confidence. People have lost confidence in government. Government has found it difficult to earn public trust and understanding. So the public does not have an understanding of what government is doing. As a result of that, the public opinion of government is, 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 at, is at its lowest ebb. Mm. Well, uh, so, I mean, for me, I, I love the fact that, you know, they are going to have to, um, you know, come together, for instance, the EFCC and the IPC, the um, FR FRCN. It's great, but I'm a bit concerned about people's jobs because we know what the economy is saying right now. So people having to lose their jobs because if there is a dupli um, duplicate, you know, um, agency, that means the moment they merge into one, two people are not going to have the same office or the same position. So what does that mean for other people, you know, that have to lose their jobs? How are they going to bounce back is a question. What about those that don't have jobs presently? But then we're going surviving? to now have a lot more people no, no, that what, are without what, jobs. What we are seeing in Bravely, what, what seeing in Bravely is that people shouldn't be making this country at the expense of others. And once you have that major acquisition, it is those that are redundant if it is not politicized. It is those that are redundant that that will be excused from service and those that have spent, let's say, 30 years, that remain five years for them to, to retire from, 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 from the civil service, that will be paid off. We have had majors of government agencies and the rest of it in the past. So people should not, uh, should, people should not entertain any fears. Either it goes to equity, or surely goes to equity with clean with, hands, with, with clean with clean hands, and not and not and not be scared of anything. So if if you have been diligent, dutiful, and disciplined in your in your in your in your conduct in in your respective assignment and duty schedule, you shouldn't you shouldn't be scared of what government. We need to do that. It's very clear that there is duplicity and multiplicity of, of, of agencies of agencies of, of government. Once you do that, then government creates an enabling environment for those to be for others to be absorbed into into under sector. For example, what is the essence of NDDC and the Nigerian police? I'm asking you. What's the essence? Mm -hmm. The civil uh, the civil defense corps and then the Nigerian what's the difference? There's what's even their... another one, King kick against um something, Kai. There's, there's, there's another illegal. one like that, you yeah. That's even Lagos, kick against indiscipline mm, in Lagos. Indiscipline, you are yeah. Last man. And then you see the kick against discipline in Lagos, going from one market or the other. Yeah. And then you you have, you have this, um, what do they call this network cars at the local government? We used to call them Wuli Wuli while we were young. So, <laughs> you, you see, you just create a venue for, 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 that's why the, the recurrent expenditure of the government is higher than the capital expenditure in every in every budgetary 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 allocations and and budget plans that we have had because you have too much personnel money that should have gone to developing the economy building the economy goes to pay salaries and wages and allowances to to some few individuals that are that are, that are making the system if some people have to make sacrifices for us to move forward i think it's time for so us yeah. to do that all right. Um, so let's talk about the economy and how it is. Um, President Tinubu was in Lagos, you know, uh, inaugurating the red line um, trains that we have in Lagos right now. And he said something. So on the nation, the headline here says Tinubu, Labor's constant strike calls unacceptable. Um, so he took a jab at labor and he says, how do you call for strikes in how many months? Um, you can't be doing this. It's unacceptable. What do you think about that? Do you think that's just mimicking them and saying, oh, yes, you are all talks and no action because you come, you call a strike and then you say, OK, we're back to negotiations. The strike is called off. And you see this happen repeatedly. What do you think? Do you think that now the government don't even... Um, they don't respect labor as much as they should because they know that the moment you call a strike after a while, you will call it off regardless. 
Well, I think that the president is just playing politics with labor with what he said. It's not within his the purview of his authority and power to say that labor, whatever labor is doing, is unacceptable to him. He's not an emperor, it's the president and labor has its own rights to protest or to, to call for strike at any point in time, which he feels necessary. But however, the actions of labor in the last nine months have shown that they have been on serious element, on serious element, quote unquote, that's my opinion, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that they will call for the strike and they themselves will call up the strike. The president should even be commending labor that they will, um, they, they've called for strike, but they've not actually carried out those strikes because they were, my team are negotiating with them every time they want to go on strike. We find, we find reasons to come together to ensure that and things, things, um, things are resolved before it degenerated to strikes, lockouts, and then um, vandalization and looting of properties. Uh, because by the time you call for strikes and then it turns to rally, uh, yeah. protest, and the rest of it gets out of control. Mm -hmm. with nobody having control over those other elements that were jack all of this. So as far as I'm concerned, it was it was trying to gab at labor, and um, it it should not it should not embolden labor to take something which is which is which is which is drastic, which is not good for the economy. We want the economy to recover. Thank God the economy has not gone into recession but at least the economy is in depression so we need to we need to we need to understand that that um, the way the people has given responsibility to have managed labor to the extent that labor called off strike um, concerning um, removal of fresh subsidy concerning providing palliative for the for the workers concerning the minimum wage which they promised <laughs> that is going to be reviewed concerning the 35,000 which they promised they will pay to all federal workers across all levels, which they have not done, and labor yet has not gone on major full bloom strike, the president should be shouldn't be throwing gap. Either that lives in glass houses does not throw stones, stones because if you throw yeah. stones, if they if they, if they respond to the stones which you throw, your your house will crack. Mm. All right, let's move over to some security matter as well. I would like to call it that. The um only Right, you know, I said something here. It's a small headline on the nation. It says, um, It's time to protect yourselves with spiritual powers. Oh, and he tells Obas. What do you think about this? Um, Nigeria is not so great when it comes to security at the moment, and now we have to go spiritual. What do you think? Well, I think that um, if you want to eat too, you don't need to eat physical food, you just provide yourself with spiritual power to eat to, so, to, to, to substitute to stay for full. food. <laughs> Yeah. Then if the if you want to travel, you don't need to use aeroplane. You don't need to use cars. You don't need to use those You're modern modern and then you use a bay. You know, since we have in, in Urbana we have a bay. So mm -hmm. if you want to travel to London, you just use a bay, you just close your eyes and then you use the spiritual power that will transport <laughs> you from Nigeria to uh, sometimes when these people talk, um you just wonder uh, what what informs they are, they are thought pattern and and mm. and and how ridiculous sometimes some of the ideas they are coming up with um, in this age and modern time where he travels they drive the best of the cars mm. they live in the best of the houses they, they they eat the best of the food they have access to the best of medicare and they are not using i'm not sure he uses a board the time there are some there are some supplements that he's mm -hmm. using all you just need to do is to take a trip um, into 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 his into his kitchen and to into into his dining mm -hmm. dining room and dining dining space and then you see what he eats and then what he drinks and they are not drinking them they are drinking imported wine they are drinking <laughs> imported um, imported coin so those, those not just ordinary whiskey and then they are talking about spiritual power when it comes to security sometimes they take us for a fool and they take <laughs> us for a ride I don't I don't it's just that I've said it, I don't know which program which I said it, that we need to hold traditional rulers accountable for the issue of security. If you're a traditional ruler and your domain, your domain is not secured, what I, what traditional authority do you have over that domain? Mm. If you don't have intelligence to help the intelligence agencies in, 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 in fishing out the bad elements within, within your domain and people in your domain are not coming up with intelligence to know. We, we, look, I tell you for a fact, where you have insurgencies, and where you have kidnapping and the rest of it, there are locals that are hating and abetting this, 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 this people. 
what are the locals doing with respect to providing security agencies with with intelligence <clears throat> and what are the traditional rulers they themselves doing to provide security agencies with intelligence and how has the tradi how have the traditional rulers win the trust and the confidence of the people that the people will come to them and provide them with information that they can provide to security agencies in tackling the incessant security challenges we have in this country so these are the areas you should be you should be looking at and these are the areas that traditional rulers should be looking at other than be talking that we should be using a B uh, and the rest of it to fortify to fortify ourselves. I don't know how many people that have access to it. I believe there are spiritual powers. There's no doubt about that. But the challenge we have in Africa is that it's not documented. And all of these things were not documented, was not shared because it was not documented. We have lost track of all of these spiritual, spiritual powers. The white people use their spiritual powers to create computer. Um, which I when I tell my student, what's the difference between putting water in Calabash and then what we are doing through Zoom now, or putting white, painting the wall white, and then you call the image of somebody to appear. We have those spiritual powers, but it was not, it was not documented, it was not shared. So there's no difference between 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 a Zoom or Skype or video call and then putting water in Calabash and calling the image of somebody to talk to those person, but we didn't share it. Uh, some people kept it to themselves, so uh, there's nothing we can do about that. If the only has access to some of the spiritual powers, because it's the, it's the, it's the paramount to law, is the progenitor of the Yoruba race, if you had access to it, let it become a common knowledge. Let them document it so that each and every one of us will have the Igbe. I wouldn't mind to have Igbe so that um, when I travel, I will just say, hey, boom, Ibadan. And then I found myself in Ibadan. And then I go to America. I'll just, I'll just use Igbe to enter White House to shake. To shake Joe Biden's hand. Hey, President Biden. <laughs> that would be amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move over to Nature News. Um, the major headline here says, Week is set to inaugurate Africa's largest water park in Abuja. Is this what we should be talking about? We have an economy that is just, we don't know where we are. It's so unstable at the moment. And then the minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yensom Wike, is talking about building the largest water park in Africa. Fine. Don't get me wrong. I know that this would, you know, become a tourist attraction. But with tourism in every country, you need security for that. And security in Abuja is not even the best at the moment. So should we be talking about a water park or looking for how we can, you know, just jumpstart our economy to ensure that it's thriving? If you don't do projects, you don't make money in public service. Mm. That's the reality. And then look at them. And the major projects, governors, governors, even presidents over time have embarked upon our on infrastructure and basic infrastructure. When government is coming to tell you that we've constructed roads, mm. we've constructed bridges, we've constructed um schools and the rest of it they tell you about infrastructure which is which i call the apc apc of public 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 service and public governance because all you just need to do once the money is there you give it to a simple thing you approve come with the design get the engineer come with the design and then there's money you have you allocate funds to those projects anybody anybody quote unquote mm. any simple thing can 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 get it done and um, the serious business of of government in providing employment in, in 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 building in building the economy in such a way that you can grow the economy that will enable private investors to invest and you build the economy you grow the economy you create employment you create employment opportunities for your citizenry you invest in agriculture to have food security and the rest of it we don't embark on that you look at pk style when he was governor of of river state what are the projects that he embarked upon construction of roads and bridges hmm. and flyovers rather construction of roads and flyovers, and that he has brought to Abuja again. What do, why does Abuja need the largest water park? What mm. do we need that for? The major problem, as the Minister of Health City, what should be his priority, his major problem which he has, is to provide, to take care of the security of security of Abuja and restore Abuja back to his master plan. Mm. The water park is the, the parks in Abuja, are they fully utilized now? The present park. Because I recall when I Fry was minister, he created a lot of gardens. He tried to restore yeah. Abuja back to to, to 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 his former to his to, to his to his proper to his proper master plan. And then there were a lot of gardens. The one in Abuja are they being fully utilized now? Mm. 
Now to talk of concreting an outlandish, outlandish white elephant project, which require a lot of. So if you are building the largest, the largest water park in Africa, you get the largest fund for it, mm. and then for for the next three years, you you keep budgeting for it because you have set a an outlandish an outlandish goal, and then it becomes a pipe bone through which you siphon public funds. I'm not as far as I'm concerned. Is it water park? Um, let me use the president gap. Is it, now water park people job. <laughs> See, now, that is it. now water now water park people good job. And I have been a water park to protect people for Abuja. Mm -hmm. I beg. I know it's, it's, it's tourism, but yeah. Give me this, give me this um, um, time. Let's go mm -hmm. to second base. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, my co my concern here is could it even be an ego play? Because when people come into power, most times they want to say, oh, I made this, I created this, this was my project. Um, and so working in my head, I'm like, could, could it be that we can want to say, oh, I went to Abuja and this was me. I created this just to have that legacy that, you know, in years to come, they're like, oh, yes, some um, Wike was the one who um, brought up this idea, executed it. Well, there's that. And there's also the part of just having to siphon money. Well, we never know. Anyways, this is where we have to, to what drop extent, in. To what extent and to what purpose? Mm. Pet projects, behaving like kids, <laughs> having pet, pet mm -hmm. projects. So it's, uh, public service is not for you to go after yeah. your pet project or to build I your agree. personal uh, personal pride or image. It's I about agree. service I agree. in the best interest of the people. Right. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much. It's always, you know, a good time having you and he just coming to share your valuable contributions. Thank you for reviewing the paper with me this morning. It's a pleasure to share the platform with a beautiful lady starting the month on a smiley note. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right, we've been speaking to Jide Johnson, is a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, who's joining us um, here in Lagos State. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at our first hot topic. Please stay with us.